In his second inaugural address, U.S. President Lincoln used to frequently quote a term to describe the wars of rebellion. This terrible war. Historians have explored the horrific casualty figures caused by new weapons technology and dated battlefield tactics to make sense of the horrendous conflict. The magnitude of the war was unprecedented, creating especially after the end of the prisoner exchange cartel in 1864, logistical problems how and where to house prisoners of war, not to mention the refugee populations. However, with almost 800,000 people killed, there remains the question, was this terrible war really so terrible in comparative perspective? The War of the Rebellion had a staggering death toll by modern standards. With as many as 850,000 people dead, about 2.7% of the pre-war population of the United States perished during the war. With about 10% of its population under arms, the northern states lost only 1.67% of its population. In the rebellious states, 20% of the population donned the uniform, and 4.5% of the population perished. Either in death, or by carrying visible wounds, the war generation left an obvious mark. The cost of war was hardly lost on contemporaries in the United States. Taking the two decades before and after Lincoln's election, there were at least 150 conflicts of various size and magnitudes. These were wars ranging from the casualty-heavy civil wars in the United States and China, to the international conflicts revising the map of Europe with German and Italian unification, to small frontier and colonial quarrels in places like Afghanistan, Bali, Bukhara, and the Zosa territory. Therefore, casualty figures range widely. Of all the conflicts during this 40-year period, the War of the Rebellion was not even remotely the most deadly. The religiously infused civil war in China, the Taiping Rebellion, had cost an estimated 20 million lives. Some historians have argued that the war was even more deadly, with potentially 40 million perishing. However, because of incomplete census records for China, figuring out what proportion of the population died during this 14-year struggle is difficult. With an estimated population of 431 million in 1851, the rebellion killed about 4.6% of the Chinese population. Furthermore, even at its lowest estimate, the Taiping Rebellion is the fifth deadliest war in human history, ahead of the Great War, where the two wars in the United States and China had the highest casualty figures, other wars were costly for the powers involved. When the Ottoman Empire refused Russia's demands to be the protector of the Christian people in its realm, and the continuous problem of Russian expansion into the eastern Mediterranean, escalated. France and Great Britain took an interest and joined the Crimean War. When the war ended with the Treaty of Paris in 1856, Great Britain had lost 20,813 men. 80% died of sickness, wounds, and disease. The French had lost around 95,000 soldiers. Piedmont Sardinia had lost only 2,166 soldiers. And the Ottoman Empire had sustained about 120,000 dead. On the other hand, 
the Russian Empire had lost officially 450,000 dead, but likely closer to 600,000. So Russians and Allied forces had lost in 30 months more soldiers in the War of Rebellion belligerents in 49 months. Yet, the war remains overlooked and largely forgotten. Meanwhile, the wars of German unification, which consisted of the Second Schleswig-Holstein War of 1864, the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, and finally the Franco-German War of 1870-71, brought death to the central parts of Europe. In the course of the nine months long Second Schleswig-Holstein War, Denmark lost 2,933 soldiers, and the German allies of Austria and Prussia lost the combined 1,548. The vast majority of the casualties came during the one major engagement at the Battle of Dupel. Thus, the Second Schleswig-Holstein War had about the same death toll as, for example, the Battle of Chickamauga, Spotsylvania Courthouse, or the wilderness. After less than two years of peace, Austria and Prussia collided over the division of Schleswig-Holstein in a seven weeks conflict. The main battle at Königsgrätz, or Sadova, ended the war. The Austrians and their allies lost, whereas the allied Italians, Prussians and German states suffered only 14,100 dead. By comparison, during the Overland Campaign, which was of similar lengths, in the course of which General Ulysses at Grand earned the title of Butcher, the US Army suffered 7,621 dead, and the rebels lost about 4,200 dead. However, neither the Prussian Field Marshal Helmut Graf von Molke nor Feldzeugmeister Ludwig Ritter von Benedict ever suffered such a title, despite their comparatively higher casualty figures. Bismarck completed the unification of Germany with a war against France. Taking advantage of Prussia's superior preparation, their armies advanced quickly and capitalized on French mistakes. While the Battle of Sedan was a turning point with the capture of Napoleon III, the war did not end, nor was Sedan the only engagement in them. Overall, the German forces lost 28,000 soldiers compared to the 138,000 dead suffered by France. War was deadly during the mid-19th century, as modern technology increased firepower and deaths. Even deadlier still was the Guerra del Paraguay from 1864 to 1870. Dictator Francisco Solanos Lopez had prepared his country for war long before his neighbors were aware of his intention. He brought in European experts and purchased new weaponry, arms European states sold to make room for modern technology. With a coherent national identity and dictatorial style, Lopez could rely on the loyalty of his people when he used political changes in Uruguay to also go after the border provinces of Brazil. Attacking Brazil, Uruguay and Argentina at the same time was fateful and devastating mistake. In the course of the Guerra del Paraguay, Argentina suffered some 18,000 dead. Brazil suffered between 25 and 50,000. Traditionally, the Paraguayan death toll has ranged from 200 to as high as 500,000. In other words, potentially 50% of the Paraguayan population perished. Other estimates claim a death toll of 50 to 80,000, or 15 to 20%. Of the Paraguayan population. We will never know the exact numbers. But at the end of the day, the 2% death toll that the United States suffered fades in comparison to that 20% that the Paraguayans suffered most likely, or the 20 millions who died in China during the Taiping Rebellion. And it's always worth remembering that the Crimean War had more casualties in 30 months than the War of the Rebellion belligerents in 49 months. The War of the Rebellion was terrible, but so were all the other wars during this era. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.